So it was sheer luck for me that Dr. Mori uh, served the military, uh, you know, service in South Korea for a year. Uh, thanks to that, he gave me great advices, uh, uh, understanding, a deep understanding of my own culture. So he's uh, one of the true prosthetic giants. And because of that, I asked him, when I was get trained by him in the U.S., I asked him how to be a prosthetic urology like you do. Uh, and he told me back uh, that, uh, Sean, put all your chips on the table. It was one of the most you know, honest answer or advice I have ever heard. So, and I believe that it comes from his own experiences as well. He is a, such a gentleman and he is a, such a modest and uh, uh, well, warm-hearted people, but never shows his temper but everybody can see that he works very hard, and at the same time, he worked very hard. He devoted himself uh, deeply into this uh, prosthetic urology field, and that's the reason why he's now in this field as a giant, in this field as a giant. So, uh, for me, he's uh, just a big, big, big brother whom I can always count on. At the same time, I believe that, same, that goes the same to my to his patients as well. Once I uh, had a you know, Korean patient who lives in Dallas and want to get a, a penile prosthetic surgery, so I referred him. I told, I told my patient, the patient to go to the, you know, uh, Dr. Mori. And then I forgot about him. And several months later, I got a postcard from that patient uh, saying that he thanked me so much for uh, uh, refer, introducing uh, him to Dr. Moray. So <laughs> it was first in my life that uh, my referral ever got thanked from the patients. So yeah, that's who Dr. Moray is. Uh, uh, there's so many things I have to learn from him. So hopefully that I can keep learning from him in the future as well. Well, um, <clears throat> men's health, uh, comprises many aspects including the, the physical and the emotional health and not only of just the patient but um, you're talking about relationships and um, when a man has problems with sexual function uh, it can affect his mood it can affect his relationships and uh, really have a negative effect on his on his lifestyle um, <clears throat> and so by addressing the nature of, of the problem, uh, sometimes with surgery, this, is, um, this has the potential to really uh, salvage uh, uh, the things that are important uh, to, uh, to the man's personal life. So uh, these, these are some of my happiest patients uh, who have uh, been successfully treated in this uh, very difficult area. Yeah, we, so training is, uh, is very important to us and uh, we are a high volume surgical center. Uh, but it's nice that when we do those surgeries, we do them in a way where the, uh, the learners can take the uh, messages and the skills along with them. And it's, it's uh, the old saying of if, uh, if you hand somebody a fish, uh, well, they won't be hungry that day. But if you teach them to fish, well, then they'll never be hungry. And uh, so it's nice to see that the patients are going to receive excellent care. Uh, based on the experiences that the trainees have with us. And we're really blessed to have outstanding trainees who uh, are very eager to learn and, uh, you know, very skilled. And so it's a very gratifying process to see uh, young, talented people emerge into leaders in the field. Well, I just got a card two days ago from a patient who was uh, so grateful that he was able to have normal, uh, satisfying relations with his wife again after many years. And, and this is uh, always touching to see uh, the effect on, on uh, the man's overall well-being. <clears throat> and so I think it is important. I think, I think we're doing a better job of taking care of things like cholesterol, diabetes, or exercising heart disease I think is being managed more successfully over years and so there is a longer lifespan 
in which uh, the sexual uh, issues can uh, raise, uh, <coughs> raise, become problems. And so people, when they have a longer life, they want to have a more enriching life. So the sexual part, I think, is, is always uh, a very uh, <coughs> satisfying uh, area for the patients who receive the implant surgery. And m many of them, many, many dozens have told me, I wish I would have done this years ago. Well, I think there's a number of factors. Number one is uh, <clears throat> that there may be a perception that it's not important, uh, and specifically with surgery, that, uh, that it may not be worthy of having a surgical procedure, which has risks, it sounds a little scary, sounds painful to the patients, when in fact, when you really explain the situation to the, to the patients, it's a minor procedure and very safe. And uh, usually, even in the worst case scenario, it's uh, the patient's no worse off than they were when they first came into the office. Because the, the surgeries are, uh, are relegated for the, the sort of the, the end of the line patients when all the other treatments have failed. So we are cautious about who we offer the surgery to. And we have to make sure that they understand and have realistic expectations. Well, um, I think it's just uh, making a positive difference in, in people's quality of life and seeing that, seeing them come in with a problem, being able to fix it. Um, some people have uh, scars or deformity uh, in their penis and also the erectile problems. And, and so to be able to um, allow them to successfully engage in, success, uh, in a sexual activity without having any worries about pain or problems of performance you know, this is like a weight uh, off their shoulder. And uh, so, so it's very gratifying to be able to offer that to the patients and then and to do it in a way where the learners and the uh, residents and the fellows that we have can carry those lessons forward and, and also create that type of impact. So this is very gratifying. Well, you, you want to surround yourself with uh, people who are interested and uh, skilled. And so uh, in a high volume, surgical center like ours, we, we have uh, the same scrub nurse working with us every day and the same circulating nurse. So, so they know what we need, when we need it. It makes the cases go faster um, and, uh, and there your outcomes are going to be better. You have the right tools available uh, for even the complex cases. You, you, have, you know what the tools are that are going to be required. Uh, everybody's aware of it and, and so it is truly a team approach um, and so we we have been blessed you know to have those types of people and and it is important in um, in a high volume center like ours well uh, the thing that impressed me so much about dr. Park is that uh, he quickly became um, one of the leaders in in all of Asia uh, I, I worked with him first about five years ago and um, I knew that he possessed a, a good basic background of uh, surgical experience, but uh, he has become an expert in this field and, and, and has risen uh, meteorically uh, to the top of the field. And I've worked with him and he's taught me many things too. So, um, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years and, and uh, he quickly has become uh, at the same level as I am. And, um, and uh, I have tremendous respect for his talent and, uh, and great admiration for his success. And it couldn't, uh, couldn't come to a nicer person, uh, couldn't be uh, you know, better deserved by anybody. He cares deeply about his patients. Uh, he has outstanding surgical skills. Um, I would welcome him as a partner uh, in my own center in Dallas or uh, anywhere. And I just can't say enough uh, about uh, him, both as a surgeon and as a person. Well, I, uh, I should be asking him for advice because he's uh, become so successful so fast uh, uh, and, and it's really, uh, it's impressive. Uh, so I think that uh, my advice to him is, is just to maintain uh, what he's doing and uh, continue to uh, be an outstanding surgeon, outstanding physician, exactly like he is now. Uh, I, I don't see... Uh, where he uh, where he else he can go in this field uh, <clears throat> beyond where he is now uh, so uh, I think the world of him and uh, have tremendous admiration for him <laughs>